Packers fan, huh? Yep. That was a rough game. Rodgers is out for the season, huh? Yep. I'm Todd. Todd, good to meet you. And you are? Josh. Josh, did you get one of these yet? I'm not. I don't know. I've handed out a few. It's a DVD called The Biggest Question. I know you're a college student, obviously. Mm -hmm. pretty, I'm pretty observant. Um, I know you're busy with classes and whatnot, but if you got time, check it out. It asks some of the... Well, quite frankly, it asks some big questions like, how do we get here? Why are we here? And where are we going at the end of life? Ever thought about stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah? you have any views on that? or? Uh, sort of. Sort of? Can I ask? Not any that are really put into yeah. religion. Uh, what was your name again? Josh. Josh, I thought so. I was going to say Josh, and then I'm like, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it wrong and look like an idiot. So, <laughs> so n nothing from a real strong religious nope. perspective. Um, when's your, I don't want to keep you, so if you want to leave, just no, you know, if you got to leave. Here for um, what would you say would be your perspective on kind of where man came from, what the purpose of life is for man, and yeah, what I'd happens? Say I'm agnostic, I guess. Agnostic. Um, Thank you for being honest. Most yeah. people are like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I kind of. We're here to. We've only got our time here on our earth to do okay. whatever we want. Really, we don't have a real purpose, but I think there's you know reason. Besides to do being good. Packers fans. Yeah. yeah. I think there's reason to do good. Okay. And not, you know, not just nothing means anything. Let's be evil, sort of thing. I think there's reason to be good. All right. So, um, I know what kind of what what's your focus here at the university? Computer science. Computer science. So you're brainy. You know, you're brainy. I could not do what you do. I have a hard time operating Windows sometimes. <laughs> um, so you said more of an agnostic. So you're like, God might exist, I but I don't know. Power, there's I don't know. But not a specific is. name for it. Okay. So would you say that in that in that worldview with that, that agnostic approach that um, that our views of right and wrong are based on societal standards of what is right and what is wrong, or do they come from that higher power that doesn't have a name? I don't think society sets it because obviously society sets a lot of things that aren't right. No, bingo, that's that's so. huge. That's the first time in about a week and a half that I've asked that question and anybody's answered it that way. <laughs> Normally it's, oh, it's societal. It, uh, I think some of it, I mean, obviously some good things. Society sets a lot of stuff that society doesn't do right. Um, so like what I posited to a, a young lady a, a few minutes ago, and it's going to start raining. Uh, what I posited to a young lady a few minutes ago was that because she said that it's kind of based on society and whatnot. So you and I would fundamentally agree that things like slavery were evil, not just because our society today says it evil is evil, but it's just fundamentally flawed. I mean, if and you look, you know, a couple hundred years ago, it was okay according to society. Right. Now it's not. And so te technically what's good and wrong shouldn't ever change. Right, exactly. I agree with you 100% on that. Um, what happens when Two people have a conflicting view in regards to that. How how do you and not not fight it out? Don't get me wrong. I don't think we should be fighting over. It. Now, there's some things that are worth going to, to war over. Yeah. You know, freeing the Jews from the concentration camps was a societal value. Um, but how do we how do we come to an agreement to argue out in a positive way without being hostile to one another? How would we argue out our incep our, the inception of what is right and what is wrong when it comes to morals and values. That's tough. I mean, we have free speech, but I mean, as long as it's not hurting anybody, I don't think what anybody's doing is wrong unless it's hurting somebody. You know, if you're hurting yourself, that's your own choice. It's not really wrong. Like, so the heroin addict, as long yeah. as he's not abusing his kids or not feeding his kids. Technically, is it wrong for him to be giving himself heroin? I don't think it's wrong. Is it? It's I mean, it's not a good it's, idea, but it's right. his own choice. Legally, it's definitely. <laughs> if your if your opinion is harming other people, like, or if your opinion is racism or stuff like that, we can't allow that. And like, that is for other people to step in. And you actually bring up a really good point, and and let me. So, can opinions in and of themselves actually be harmful? If the person lets them harm them, the person being offended. So is is just being offended by something that someone says or writes and that's really how we communicate there's only two ways of communicating is writing or in speech 
can our can our written speech or our spoken verbal verbalized opinions can those actually harm people? I think they can. You do? Yeah, you got people walking around here. If you had some people out here with a you know anti LGBTQ sort of thing out here, anti protesting, you know that would probably hurt people's feelings. And Should those people be silenced? I think so because that's kind of an you know an opinion that. I really don't think should be protected by the First Amendment, you know, anti, because we look at it science, there's nothing wrong, like, just like white people and black people, all mm -hmm. sorts of different races, you know, everyone's equal, if you're LGBTQ, you're equal, Okay. You protected from. So, you got me thinking, which I appreciate, because normally I'm, I'm thinking about. So hate speech, you, hate speech shouldn't be allowed. Okay, so would you, would you, would you say, here, here's how I'll ask this, because I think I think maybe we're saying the same thing, um, just from a little different perspective. So, if a person were to stand up and say, "I believe that all fill in the blank, whatever whatever group of people, LGBTQ, um, whatever ethnic background," and you're gonna, I'll, I'll make it quick. <laughs> Would it be wrong of us to allow a person to say, "I think all of those people should be rounded up and killed"? We should, we should stop that, right? Yeah. But if I stood up in a public forum and said that I believe that this particular practice is wrong, whatever it might be, I should still have the freedom to say that as long as I'm not advocating for those people to be yeah. harmed, yep. physically harmed, correct? I can agree with that. Okay. So if you look at uh, Baker out in Washington State here a couple of years ago, owned a business. Refused to bake a cake for the... Refused to bake a cake. He wasn't technically hurting them. He I was, think that should be allowed. That should be allowed. It's his choice. Whether or not you agree with it. Yeah. Okay. So what you're really saying is, is it's not that you're against people speaking their opinion. You're, what you're saying is classified as hate speech is actually f verbally or in written form advocating for physical harm yeah. to be done to people. Okay. That's why I asked for clarification because I think when we, you know, uh, in, in an upfront way and I should have said this sooner obviously I, I come from a Christian perspective and that's what the DVD is and I'd encourage you to watch it because we're gonna get rained on here in a second I'd encourage you to watch it um, but even speaking from a constitutional constitutional perspective that First Amendment in there is given us or gives us the freedom to say anything that's unpopular yep. no matter how unpopular it is because everybody's opinion at one point in time or in every, in any circumstance could be deemed as very unpopular. Mm -hmm. um, no one should have the freedom or the right, especially the government, to silence an unpopular opinion. Where where we step in as a society, it goes back to what you were saying 200 years ago, it was okay to have slaves, but where we step in as a society is, is when your opinion stops being just an opinion but clearly advocating for physical harm to be done to people. Yep. And you, So we would agree on that. Yeah, right? I guess it's your purpose. If you want to take vengeance on other people for not agreeing with your opinion or what you think is right or if you're just trying to go on out trying to say hey this is what I think I think you're wrong you know being just giving your opinion versus a free exchange of ideas no yeah. matter how different they different versus advocating that demise of a okay I wanted to make sure we were on the same page because that's I think that's fundamentally really important to who we are as as Americans and as yeah. as people is that we have the freedom to say whatever we want. We also have the con freedom to pay the, we have a responsibility yeah. to pay the consequences yeah, for yeah, it. So it check, it Josh, check that out. I know I don't want you to get wet and no. I really don't want to get wet either. So oh, watch what'll happen is I'll walk back to my vehicle sun's gonna come and out. the sun will come out yeah. <laughs> and I'll be like. <laughs> I think big problem or kind of what we're talking about is the whole tolerance thing now. Everybody's so tolerant, but you also have to be tolerant of people who have varying opinions. Thank you. you. I'm, Even if they're, you have to be tolerant of people who view, you think they don't have to be tolerant. You have to be tolerant of that view. Yep. People who don't have tolerant. to accept it. Yeah, you don't have to accept but it. But you do have to tolerate it. Even people who don't want to tolerate you. Right, you absolutely. You still have to tolerate them. That is really, I'm like, how old are it's you? Kind man? of ironic. 21. 21? 21? Sorry. 20. You must have just turned 22. May. May? You should be used to it by now. <laughs> you do sports at all? Uh, not not no. really anymore. Skiing. Skiing? It's huge in skiing. So Downhill? Yeah. yeah. Where are you from? Uh, Dubuque, Iowa. How'd you get into downhill in the beach? Oh, uh, we have a mountain right there. Not mountain. A bluff? Sundown mountain, yeah. Hill. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about yeah. now. Yeah, 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 I got you. I grew up like three minutes from there, so. I live I up in, in Minnesota in the bluff country, so 
so I'm familiar with I mean, skiing all over. There's downhill, cross country. Oh, yeah, I've been yeah. places in Minnesota and Wisconsin. Yeah, I love. I I used to love to ski. My body won't handle it anymore. I'm old and beat up. So, <laughs> uh, what's the next class? Uh, intermediate computing. Intermediate computing. So you're what a third year student then? Uh, up here, I'm a. It's my third semester. Third semester. I have a two year degree from NICC in Dubuque, computer networking and. From tech. NIC is that? Northeast Iowa Community College. Okay, oh, so an NIACC, which is over in Mason City, North Iowa Area Community yep. College. Okay, that's threw me off for a second. I was over there a couple of weeks ago. Um, no, I really appreciate your uh, thought process, and it's nice to see a young man you. thinking about it. And check that out, and if you ever see me on campus again, and you're like, I really didn't like that DVD, uh, you can throw something at me. <laughs> Just don't hurt me. <laughs> I love talking to people. Yeah. From, I was, there's a, some monks that come around campus a lot. I, Last year, I, I talked to one guy for a couple hours. Um, like a... Uh, Krishna monk. Uh, Catholic monks or... Yeah, Kr Krishna. Oh, Krishna. Krishna, okay. Uh, cool. Somebody else, uh, I actually ran into three um, young young uh, people who are part of the Navigators group here on campus, which is a Christian organization. And um, they said that I do, from time to time, when I go to different places, I do what's called open-air preaching. And they told me that there have been people here that, you know, they're oh, really good at hellfire and screaming oh, and saying God. horrible things. You wouldn't believe. And, and I've told them I actually like to follow them because the way I do it, far different. I actually ask questions instead of just screaming at people. Yeah, they, just they like what I did with... They tell them they're going to hell. And, yeah, that's just like what I did with you, only I do it with a group. And I actually encourage people who disagree with me mm -hmm. to ask questions. And I actually shut up long enough Thank for them listen to, to listen and to answer. No, I say some hard things, you know what I mean? I'll stand up and I say some hard things, but where do those people normally go when they're here? Right here. Right here? What are they? Yep. They stand, sit on that cement. That block right yep. there? Him and his wife. Was he, uh, do you, do you remember, was he, uh, like, Indian looking? No, he was, yeah. um, white guy? They were, yeah, he's a white guy with the beard. They were, like, fundamentalist type. Were they, holding, were they holding signs that say, like, turn or burn or repent and... Shit like that, yeah. Stuff. yeah. Saying, dude, your language is not going to bother me. They were saying no. stuff like, like, have a bunch, get married and have a bunch of kids, your wife gets bigger boobs. Just like, see, I don't Are know you kidding me? They, I kind of think they come and rile people up on purpose. Yeah, I, think I, I would agree. On purpose. I, I would don't agree. think they're actually trying to reach people that way. Because then they get... We, they have a huge well, group of students here. And here here's what I'll tell you. This is what I know because um, I have some friends that we do abortion ministry down in Iowa City um, because not in, a, in an angry way, but we, we really care about the women. Mm -hmm. You know, Women who have abortions are have a higher percentage of, of suicide attempts and successful suicides than women who don't. But we also care about that un, care about that unborn child. And one of the things we do when we're done with doing the abortion ministry in the morning is a lot of times we'll go down to the University of Iowa campus and we will do open air proclamation. And so we've actually had weeks where those kind of people have been on campus and we followed them and, and people will notice the difference because we're not, we're raising our voices to be heard. You know, you have to do that in a crowd. We'll raise our voices to be heard, but what we, what we do is we talk to people in my experience, because I watch those videos of people like that because I don't want to be that way. Mm -hmm. And what, we, what, we, what I see is what they want, they think that they're doing the right thing because people are yelling and screaming at them back. And, and you're right, they provoke that response intentionally by saying just horrible things and telling people that, you know, I've heard people say, and excuse the terminology, fags go to hell. Well, everybody in my worldview, apart from Christ, is, is damned. The issue is, is it's not just homosexuals, it's not just this particular sin, it's all sin damns us. And that's why my Savior came, was to pay the penalty that I couldn't pay, because I couldn't be perfect like Christ was perfect. And if I'm failing to do that as a Christian, and, and I'm talking to you, Josh, as an agnostic, what am I doing if all I'm doing is yelling at you and telling you you're going to hell? That's like looking at a person who has cancer and say, eh, you're going to die and not telling you why, right? If you had cancer, and I just walked up and I, and I said to you, oh, you're gonna die, and I walked away, you'd be like, yeah, we're all gonna die, dude. So, mm -hmm. Somebody gotta die of something. But if I walked up and I told you, you have cancer and here's the cure, are you gonna listen to me then? Probably. Probably, and that's the difference. They don't, all they do is they holler about. Don't do this, don't do that. Right. I'm gonna help for this. Right, and the problem is, is they don't know their scriptures because 
those people that you saw, if they were really preaching that gospel message that, we've, that we're talking about, that I'm talking about, and I'm trying to get people to think about, if they're really doing that, they're going to tell them, yeah, we're all sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. No matter what sin it is you've committed, God judges that. But he sent his son to pay the penalty for that if you repent and believe. And that's, that's the difference. And I guarantee you, you didn't hear that from them. Mm -hmm. Light of the so, end of the tunnel. Yeah. Well, I really it. appreciate your time. So if you happen to see me on campus again, let me know yeah, what you think of that. You, you're a thinker. I appreciate yeah. that. So I don't run into that a lot anymore. No. So have a good day, man. Yeah, you too. I'm going to get wet. Yeah.